Yesterday, we did have some business to take care of, man. Shout out to Omar Khan staying in the lab. He's always cooking. But we did sign Cordero Patterson, um, running back, kick returner, hybrid wide receiver. Uh, was in Atlanta past uh, was past three years. Before that, was in Chicago. Um, but yeah, we signed him yesterday to a two-year deal worth up to $6 million. And uh, yeah, y'all seen, I'm excited about him. I like him a lot. think he brings a lot to the table. What was your take on it, though, man? You see the move. You see the money. Three years too late. I swear we talked about him three years ago, bro. This is the this is before Naj. It was deja vu. Or even, I think, like two years ago when he had his first breakout year with Atlanta. Yeah. He was a free agent. And it was like they ended up re-signing him for two more years, but mm-hmm. he was in the mix. Yeah. I, I know there were we talked some about talks him. about maybe mm-hmm. bringing him in, being the number two to Najee. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I think three, four years too late, but still good. I still think he can contribute. And maybe last year was just a weird year for him. Like, Arthur Smith obviously likes him Mm -hmm. and probably thinks he can do something here still. He still has some gas left in the tank. But from what I was hearing, why some of Patterson's numbers were down so much last year, even though he appeared in 14 games, they were saying he was never right, Mm -hmm. like he was banged up. Now, the weird part is... They drafted Bajon Robinson. They have Tyler Algier. So Patterson was their number three. So naturally, he was going to get less touches than mm-hmm. what he was getting in 2021 and 2022. Yeah. But don't we have like a similar pecking order here too with a Najee Harris and Jalen Warren? So I, I just wonder how much we're going to feature him. Like I, I'd like to see him turn back the clock and be that 2021 or 2022 version of himself and be a key part of the offense like Arthur Smith uh had him doing down there in Atlanta these last, uh, or I guess not these last three years, but two of the last three years. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm good with the move. Yeah. I'm good with the move, particularly uh, just adding to the special teams and being a kick returner for us. I don't think this new rule being implemented is a coincidence because mm-hmm. it seems, I didn't dig into it too much, but it seems like mm-hmm. the rules are forcing the team's kicking off to actually kick it in play because there will be a penalty if you kick it out of bounds. Mm -hmm. So having, you know, the best kick returner over the last decade back there, it's not going to hurt. Yeah. Even though he's 33, you know, does he have something? No. Hopefully. Like, we're only two years removed from him putting up some good numbers. Like, I know 2021 was his breakout year, but 2022 he didn't fall off really at all. He was still featured pretty heavily. It was just last year was, you look at it, he really didn't do jack shit for the Falcons. Yeah. But some people are saying there was other stuff going on behind the scenes with him and injuries. Worst case scenario, he's an upgrade for our RB3 spot. Like, I'd take him all day over Godwin and Gwabuki, and I think he's an upgrade over Godwin in the return game too. Yeah, It's just weird, though, because he is – return man right like mm-hmm. he's a utility man but he's known for his returning ability he's in a like all-time list in terms of kickoff return yeah like, yeah like he's probably yeah. after Devin, Devin Hester. Hester yeah I don't know if, I don't think he's a hall of famer like Hester but he's been Hester, the best we've had yeah, think, over the last Hester decade making the hole was because of how special Hester was Patterson is unique and he's special too but he ain't special like that he's more like special like when we think of I don't know like Dante Hall it's like yo, yeah. Like you got a you, go. you got a moment in time. Like we're gonna always remember you, yep. but you're not that. But, but we you, remember you. You though. look yeah. at his last two years. He only got mm-hmm. was it seven attempts kick returning yeah. last year, and then two years ago it was only nine attempts. Mm-hmm. So I, I wonder how he's viewed from uh, that regard still as being just like your main return guy. I'll take him, though. I'd take him over Godwin. We had Godwin yeah. being our main return guy last year, and at this point I'd still take a 33-year-old Cordell Patterson over him. Yeah. Um, and I would just briefly say in terms of the returns, they were in a dome. A lot of them kicks is going out the back of the end zone, mm. bro. Okay. Yeah. Typically, in, yeah. Fair. Yeah, they back of the end zone back. And a guy like Cordero, man, I've been with Danny Smith, still a special teams coach, obviously, He's been here before I got here. He's been here after I got here. But during the four years I was here, certain return people, he's like, yo, you'll never give them your dues a return. It's like, yo, you're never just not kicking that, period. He's like, every single time putting out the back of the end zone. He was like, a certain guy's like that. Cordell Patterson is one of them dudes. 
But with the way the rules are being changed officially now, yeah. that's the game changer. Because now we will see an uptick in just the amount of returnable footballs on kickoff return. So I do, barring you know, health and stuff like that, I do think we'll see at least a lot more from him in that vein. That's interesting. I do like that. Um, do you have anything else you want to add with him, though? Uh, I'll just be curious to see how he's used in the offense because mm -hmm. I think we do have a similar RB depth chart to what the Falcons were doing. But I wonder if Arthur Smith is going to be able to incorporate Corderell more as opposed to what happened last year. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm intrigued because I think he can be a, a really good asset for us oh, yeah. if he still has gas left in the tank. So to me, man, I think he definitely has gas in the tank. Um, when we're talking about a three-year sample size in Atlanta and two of those years being really good and just this yeah. final one being the off year, I'm willing to bank on the two that were dope because he got back-to-back -back where he's 600 on the ground. He had one where he's 600 on the ground, five-something in the air. Yeah, You're like, bro, that's, that's production. That's protection. Yeah, he should have yeah. made a Pro Bowl that year yeah, for his yeah, offense. Yeah, He's made Pro Bowls and all pros that's for special teams. Yeah, but, like, but he should have had it that yeah. year. And that's the part for me that is intriguing because I'm not bringing him here to be the full-time every down back. I think that would lead to him being banged up, hurt probably on IR by week four. But in this scenario where you're talking about we're going to use you mainly in the return game, but you're almost like a specialist utility weapon on offense, I like it a lot. Now, I see the similarities between Atlanta and our backfield, but the personnel and the timing of the personnel are drastically different. But John yeah. Robinson was the fifth overall pick. Was he, he fifth? Was he fifth? He might have been. Uh, he was at least top ten. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, top, yeah, they invested a lot in him. Yeah, and so, I think he's better than Najee. Right. I think he's flat So out it better. was like. I'll take Jalen over Algier, though. Respect. But that's the whole thing. So I'm like, the Bajan part. Naj doesn't hold the room the way that Bajan would hold that room there. We were legit hollering for Jalen Warren to get more touches. Yeah. Bajan is in these next two they seasons. They were calling for Bajan yeah. to get more touches. Yeah. So that's kind of like my thought process with it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think all three, though, work well together because Najee, his defining characteristic is power, but he's not elusive. Jalen Warren, he can give you the power, but we know, man, he's the speed dude. He's the getting over fill and go. Cordell Patterson is the actual perfect blend of both. He has enough bursts in the open field. That way he, better receiving than both. Way yeah. better because he's a former receiver. And when you think of the size also, he's not some little guy. The 6'2", 220 out that backfield. So when you're just talking about his ability to make a defense still be in base personnel and he can handle that, but then you get that matchup with him on some of these linebackers, that's the part that makes Cordell so dangerous in the way that he was utilized. And that was why he had the success that he did, especially the first two years in Atlanta. Because and that was with Arthur Smith. And it was with Arthur yep. Smith. And my thing is this. I also take into account this past year in Atlanta, their quarterback situation wasn't the best. We've seen firsthand when your quarterback situation is up and down, everything around you is going to be kind of up and down. So to me, I look at that. I look at some of the injuries and I say, man, across the board, this is a bad time. But the one thing that I do love is the best version that I saw you in this role was with Arthur Smith. And now he is not the head guy. He is the OC. So could Arthur Smith's failure as a head coach have also been a part of everything that was going on out there in his production? Yeah, sure. When your head man tricked out, hey, man, yeah. At least they still like effect, each other. But they like each other. Yeah. Like obviously, and that's a positive. Obviously, they wanted to join forces again. Yeah. So that's my part where I'm like, I still feel good about it. Um, I know he's 33, but at the same time, I'm not tripping because I'm not asking him to come here and be RB1 or RB2. It's like, bro, you're... And he doesn't have a lot of wear on him for nah. over the years because he Cause was he doing a lot of return that. stuff yeah. until... Yeah, Atlanta's when That's he when got he... most of his production yeah. on offense. <laughs> right, I was like proud of that. He was a wide receiver that was struggling at wide receiver. Dude, he was supposed to be so good coming out Because he was big speed. Big speed. Everybody loves big After speed, After his rookie year, like, I thought he was going to be the Vikings guy. Everybody loves big speed, man. When you big and go run, that's the special part. That's... NFL dudes would be like, bro, how you that big and running like that? That's why they... Yeah. But for him, it was like the rest of it never developed. Yeah, I guess the yeah. route running as a receiver was mm -hmm. never there. That, that had to have been it. Yeah, well, because anybody can go fast straight. But in football, it's like how often are you just running in a straight line with nobody touching you? It's like, yo, you got to be able to stop, go, tempo yourself, and do certain things to utilize your speed to your advantage. So at least for him now, though, I think 
like running back Cordero. That, it's like, yo, you utilizing your talents a lot better in this Atlanta situation, and now hopefully that I carry over to us here, man. Yeah, I think it's a cool signing. I, yeah. I don't really have anything against it. Felt like maybe we ever paid a little, but... Because I was going to ask you, how'd you feel about the two for six? What, three, yeah, three million a piece. Like, we're paying Deshaun Elliott that. He's going to mm-hmm. be our starting safety. This is your starting return, man, and yeah. definitely you're going to get value out of my I, I'm offense. I'm not, I'm not going to be complaining too much if we ever yeah. paid Cordell Patterson, like, one million a year. Yeah. It, it is what it is. If like, that's the price you pay for a name like that my to thing come is, in at here, bare whatever. minimum, you got to start at, what, two, two, five? I feel like bare minimum yeah, for yeah, a guy exactly. like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, maybe you ever paid him a little for what his market should be right now. Nah. Coming off of last year, but, hey, it's whatever, man. Like, you're right. Maybe the two years in Atlanta are more of what he is nowadays than just mm. last year. I think this goes hand in hand with a lot of the moves we've been making. Low risk, agree. high reward. I would agree. Like there's not any risk to this move at all. Nah. Now some of these low risk, high reward moves have been more splashy than others, but mm-hmm. there's not much risk with any of these moves. You go from no. Russ to Fields. I guess Queen would be the one you talk about most just because you're paying him the most but we got him for a bargain compared, compared to, to what we thought his market dudes, was going to yeah. be like mm-hmm. and we needed an inside linebacker he was the best yeah. inside linebacker available you, you can't hate on that move yeah. either and I all these other know. ones like a Kyle Allen this mm-hmm. depth D lineman uh the Quez Watkins yeah because I went back and Van I checked Jefferson out. like yeah, these, yeah there's there's no harm in any well, of these because I went back and checked out Dean Lowry and he's another dude that has started multiple games I think it's what 120 games he's played in started like 80 something of them though it's like Man, the dude has sacks, has tackles, but more importantly, it's just the another veteran D line presence. A dude that has started a dude that understands how to play. So when you're talking about pushing other guys, making other younger guys, the Marvin Leals, Isaiah Lottimuk, stuff like that, step up. It's like that's what you get in there. But the other part that I like about Cordell, it's another veteran presence. A guy that number one is an individual, four time Pro Bowl or four time All Pro. He's also a Super Bowl champ. He was a part of a team in New England that took care of business. Really? So, mm-hmm. so when I think of just those dynamics, it's like, man, so you're telling me as an individual, you've been able to do certain things, right? But then you've also been a part of an organization that actually won one, and you were there for that. To me, I'm just like, yo, I think that that's, that's valuable. When we're talking about just where we were a year ago, two years ago, and the lack of veteran offensive experience, right? Yeah. The lack of leadership, the lack of just guys that have done it. It's like now we're getting more of those guys over there. We talked to Van Jefferson, right? We said about Van. What also is he? Super Bowl champ. Dude that's been there before. Russ, what is he? Super Bowl champ. Guy that's been there before. So you're starting to bring in some guys that have actually seen and been a part of what it takes to get there. And that's Peck and Zantics won't be tolerated anymore. Right, because there's a difference between if you've only been around talent. And this is the thing. If you've only been around talent. Yeah. You look at Pickens and people will swear by it. And it's like, yo, this is beautiful. I love this. Let's go. Like, do what you need. It don't matter. Just talent. But when you're around people that have actually won, you're like, bro, your talent is great, but you can't, your talent can't make you be a detriment to everything else that's being built because you're so engulfed in yourself right now. Not saying that that's the case, but it could come off like that. When you're part of teams that have made them runs, bro. You realize, like, man, it's less about the individual. It's more about the team. It's more about the group. So if that means, man, I might not get 10 targets this week. I might only get five. Bro, all right. But ball out of them five. But you still got to have a good energy, though. When you're part of teams like that, we've seen Landon Roberts, man. Think about how Landon leads on defense, man. It's just the different things that he does, the different things that we ask. Even when we like, yo, we don't even like asking you to do this. But you're still knocking it out because he's been a part of it. Yeah, And that's the part for me where I'm like, man, just adding those type of guys on offense, I think is going to be a huge asset for that side of the ball, man. Because we were young over there, bro. Yeah, I like this move. Nothing wrong with it. Wish it would have happened, like I said, three, four years ago. But yeah. there's nothing wrong with it at all. No. It's it's an upgrade for a position we kind of need right now. Because I don't even think Godwin's on the roster anymore, right? No, he's not. So mm-hmm. for an RB3 and a kick returner, he fits the bill perfectly. Yeah. Now we don't have to draft a running back. We don't have to waste a pick on a running back. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, we got a good return man here. But at the same time, if you still wanted to grab a running back anywhere, have we talked about mid, late round? Yeah, but you could do it. But I'm saying in the sense of this. It's like if you still wanted to bring in competition, if you still wanted to add to that room, because as we've said before, you don't just do it and be like, oh, yeah, we're cool with those two guys. Yeah, we're not worried about who's next. We're not worried about pushing. We're not worried about injury. It's like. Nah, 
you still go get you some. Like you said, it could be undrafted. It doesn't have to be an investment because you did spend two for six. But from a business standpoint, you're just thinking like, all right, how much longer do I want to wait on this? Or is that going to still be that this year? That's all I'm saying. Like it gives you just another, just another. I got a couple Man. questions for you. What's up? Does he get 8-4? Does he get 8-4? Um, is, what did he wear in Atlanta? 8-4. Hmm. What did he wear in uh, Chicago? I think he's been 8-4 his whole yeah, career. So I don't, I don't, I've never like followed his numbers like that, bro. I think he has. Yeah. Been. But yeah, he can get 8-4. Yeah. We've already <laughs> given out 8-4, haven't we? Yeah, we've given so. out 8 before, yeah. Since I, A-B. Yeah, we've given out 8 I don't know if anyone had it regular season, but... We've definitely... I've seen people in 8-4 before, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, there's been yeah. dudes in the preseason with 8-4, yeah. for, for sure. And yeah, with how A-B exited here, he's not yeah. one of the unofficial jersey numbers. You know how that goes, That we're bro. retiring. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It if is, he's it's, been historically an 8-4 no, guy, like, I, I don't, don't think see there's why there's that would stop. Uh, sacredness yeah. to 84 right yeah. now. Yeah, I would say if that's, if that's what he's doing, did. I ain't tripping if he wore that one. Yeah, we ain't tripping. <laughs> Yeah. Now we ain't giving it to him more so like yo you more talented and that's why but it's like yo if that's your number like I I ain't tripping on it. Were you at on the non? Are you tripping on it though? Hold on, are you tripping on eight four? Nah, he, he should get eight four. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, we're not holding eighty four back that's, for anyone. I was like, oh yeah, it's, I I don't I feel like I've definitely seen eighty four since AB though. But you're right. I don't know if they made it to the regular season. Yeah, this yeah. this is a dude you could give his yeah. number to like. He's been 84 this whole time. He gets He's had 84. a damn good career. He could get 84. He could definitely get 84. And it'll be cool <laughs> having seen a running back out there with 84 on. Uh, the next question, though, is where you at on Najee conspiracy talk right now? I missed this. What was the conspiracy talk with Naj? Is Najee on the way out with the signing? <laughs> you said you didn't want to touch a running back. You heard me say, hey, you can still draft your running back in the mid rounds, right? Okay. So this isn't the nausea replacement. So you said uh, you got Jalen Warren as the fast guy. The next guy. I needed me be. a big speed guy. I kind of got my in between guy right now. So you said I can still draft something third, fourth, five, eighty two, even if, like I can get something in that run. And this now I got my trio, and I don't have to pay that long term. Yeah, no fifth year option. You got to worry about. Okay. I tried to like loosely throw it out there. Just try to be loose, you know what I mean? But it's like that's a two for six, too, huh? Huh. That ain't crazy, man. Hmm. Two for six, interesting. Familiarity with the scheme, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Not 400 and 400 and 400 touches. Oh, huh. I can go get something up. Now, I don't want that to so be the, the case. Next, I don't want that to be the case. The next running back pickup would be the nausea replacement. To me, think? yes. I but don't, this, this makes things interesting, this at is least loaded. right now. This is on deck. And that's like how I viewed it when I'm like, oh, competition yep you brought in competition because nobody just gets to just guarantee you a spot next year unless you the first round traffic from that year or you just got the big boy contract or you coming off with like something special it's like other than that i gotta think business-wise because what happens if we can't get an agreement with Naj, or what happens if Naj doesn't want to you know take well to us yeah not his fifth you know what i'm saying so it's like yo all right let's just get some insurance Cordell to me looked like the insurance piece because it's like yo I already know you can ball I already know you can come in here and do this role and I got 30 over here already in terms of Jalen Warren but I still this gives me some fle- I got flexibility now kind of like we said earlier with uh the center position versus like some of these other spots it's like right now we don't have any flexibility first round because like yo we still need a center yeah these other spots we got flexibility I just think the Cordell move gave us flexibility I don't think it is a direct headshot that hey Naj you're gone but I think it gives them flexibility that if they decide that, man, we want to go a different direction or we don't like how these conversations are going right now, yeah, that we got, we just got options. And that's as a, like, business side, they just want options. And these are all high quality options to an extent. Yeah. So it's like, we can't fault that. And I'm sure for Naj, he understands what that move is because Cordell was in a swim a couple years ago when he was trying to get paid. It's like, y'all know what this is. No. Nah. You use the word insurance. I think that's a great yeah. one word definition for this Cordero Patterson signing. He's mm-hmm. insurance in the running back room, insurance with special teams. Yeah. Like I said, it's not a guarantee that Naj is not here. Like I'm not going there with that, but I do look at this move like 
right. Yeah, because I could see it Act working with this bro. trio yeah. really well as is. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Najee the Bruiser. You got Jalen Warren as, you know, that speed, lightning type of guy, but also is a bruiser because anyone yeah. watches him knows he's like, not he, afraid he, to mm-hmm. uh, deliver a hit. Yeah. And then with Cordell Patterson, like a nice blend of both, but it's like, pass catching prototype more of the pass yeah. catching prototype compared to the other two mm-hmm. like that trio is kind of nice and you can go and get another six foot 200 pound running back if you want yeah, to like you can go get that yeah exactly and it's way cheaper and with way less mileage on it and that's the part where i'm looking at this move like make sure you're saying all the right things tweet all the right things because that could get weird bro it could very well get weird because it was already weird about you at times these past two seasons before we even had legitimate insurance like this but now that that's here yeah we'll see what energy is on yeah. was it matt canada was it kenny was that the things that was bothering Bothered Najee him. the most yeah because he was another one stuff? of the vocal ones not full on deontay but he was one of the more vocal ones so it's just like you seen how they've been acting they are not playing no games right now man like, I ain't saying you got to be scared because Najee's still going to be straight. He'll still be playing somewhere this year. Like, that's not changing. But in terms of just you want to stay here, do your whole career here and all that, it's like, all right, don't be naive to it. That's just player to player. Just like, yo, don't be naive to it. They don't just bring him in here just for you to be, oh, yeah, you're still the guy, Najee. Don't worry about that guy right there. He got two for six. He's 33. Any play my position? Um, Might be getting paid the same as It's like, Najee all right, right now, bro. Right? <laughs> Sorry. That's what I'm What's saying. You getting? That's Probably what I'm saying. You catch what I'm saying? Like, yeah. High twos, insurance. Mid threes. Yeah. Let me see. I want to check this out. And this is the thing. It's like I get you know the thought process because we're not saying that three point six a year, sorry. or three point two six. I'm sorry. So two points. So point two six more, essentially. And that depends on just how the numbers for Cordero's divvied up. But what I would say is this, man. Um, just bringing it back in terms of Najee. It's not that we're saying that Cordell Patterson is a better player than Najee Harris. That's not the case. But in terms of just the running back market and the lifespan of them, this is a part of what we've talked about where you're like, you don't draft them in the first round. You don't pay them because you can just, after every three to four years, you just retread. You just go get you another one, cheap labor, run the wheels off of them. So in a way, this is that. But at the same time, it's not completely that because Najee is still a huge asset. We know thousand yard rusher, three seasons back to back. The durability yeah. people are bringing up that the part chat. is that, real. Yeah, that's that's no, legitimate. No that. So yeah, trust me, we all are on that. But at the same time, when you're just thinking about how do I compete offensively, right? That was what everybody complained about, right? The lack of scoring points, the lack of explosive plays. Is Najee's play type an explosive type? We don't look at him the way we look at Jalen Warren because Jalen is an explosive type player. Najee is more of just the body puncher, body puncher, body puncher. All they saying is we can get body punchers. Body punchers aren't hard to find. Explosive, Bajan Robinsons, them, them special ones are the ones that's hard to find. But body punchers or volume guys, the NFL has shown us now, at least throughout the past five, ten years, that you're able to get backs that can do that or very similar to that for just a lot less cost. So it's not a shot or it's not something that we're saying Najee is doing negatively. It's just the nature of that position and his particular skill set and just the trend of the NFL. That's why they had the conference call these past couple years about not getting paid because they're like, yo, we don't have to just pay regular running backs. You got to be special for us to pay. At least that's what they're saying. Yeah, I feel like Najee is a little bit more than, you know, a body puncher, particularly like late in the season and. What he brings from a durability standpoint, because yeah. that says something, but his ball security, what he can do in the receiving so, end, too. Like, he's he's more skilled than when just, I like, say a, a plotter, body you puncher, get what I mean? So, I get it. Y'all hear body puncher the same way y'all hear game manager, and for people that don't play it, y'all look at that as a negative. It is not a negative. No, right, okay. A I body puncher to me is the guy that if I hand this ball up to him, he's going to get me three and a half to four every single time, and you're going to hate tackling this dude every single day. You're going to have a headache. That don't mean that that sucks. That don't mean that that ain't special. That don't mean that ain't durable. Because we put body punches to sleep. He ain't going to sleep. No. But when I say he's a body puncher, when have you seen him go 80? Oh, yeah. For sure. If you can't go 80, you're a body puncher to us. That's what we say. Okay. So it's like you're either a guy that can go to the house 
Oh, you a volume, dude? This guy to just beat him up, beat him uh, up. Yeah, yes. you're just making it very it's black and white. It's either yeah. one or the other. It's okay. one or the other. So it's like you could call from a, this, you're coming from like a defender standpoint, right? From like a defender how you standpoint, label. yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So it's like we obviously we're not minimizing Najee. Yes, Najee has a lot. His pass protection, right? We know he could block like a son of a gun. We know his ball security. Yeah, you don't put the ball on the ground. Just the reliability, yeah. almost like Terrell right. Edmonds on defense. Yeah, but that's my thing. It's just like. I know what that is. Consistent, consistent, consistent. It's the McDonald's number one. We know what that is. But the issue in terms of when you're talking about long-term plans, when you're talking about just planning around a guy, that isn't as scary to some people as the speed part. And that's the part that I'm not telling you this. The league tells you this. But Sean went when? Top 10, right? We'll just loosely say top 10. It was definitely top. It was definitely top. I thought it was top five. But it's like, but my thing is, it's like that style of player is what the NFL wants. If they're going to go and get them and say they're special because speed kills. The power part, it just isn't the same in terms of how the game has shifted right now. So that's the whole Najee argument. But it's not saying he's not a good player because he is. But when you're talking about investing him long term, that's the debate. Yeah, that's the weird part. How much you love him? If you love that, like that I view much, him pay as him an long asset. Term. I like him is. on the roster, but put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. How great am I feeling about giving him franchise running back money? I'll be honest, I don't. I don't feel that great about it. Our Najee convo is the San Francisco 49ers Brock Purdy convo. Like if you have how Najee, confident do you feel about him? If you love him that much, show us. Pay him. If you think that he's more than that, if you think he's special, if you think he's all these things that y'all say he is, put your money where your mouth is. Like, I think no matter what, as long as Najee's here, I'm always going to want a compliment for him. Of course. So that's why you can't be paying him Can you pay double him? digits. Or you already say you money. can't pay him 10 if he needs a compliment. No. 10 means you the guy. But that, I mean, he, you could still be an asset. Yeah. You could still be an asset. If we can keep Jalen huh? Warren and Najee around 100%. for... Next few years, yeah. and, and Patterson sticks around these next two. Like I think that's that's a good running back room. And that's my and it's like you can keep think, Naj I, if Naj is cool with the numbers that go with that. Yeah, and I think that's a good way for yeah. the Steelers if you're the front office and Omar Khan to allocate your money. You're not spending out the wazoo on the yeah. running back position, but you have like insurances within the room by having multiple guys that can do it. Yeah, I, it's a good strategy if we want to stick with Najee and Warren going forward, but. You can't be paying Najee probably what he wants. Because at bare minimum, Naj should holler about, I'm starting to convo at six, starting to convo at seven. From his perspective, back to back to back thousand yard seasons. Only one that's done First it. round draft yeah. pick. He should be starting to convo at that number. And I like that for him. But if you're the Steelers, how do you justify giving him seven? How do you justify giving him eight, nine? Nah. Or is he cool with six? If he's cool with that, then cool. <clears throat> but that's my whole it's like yeah maybe like a three year deal six a year for 18 total something like that maybe that could work uh, make the guarantees in year one like yeah I was so, it's say, front, so it's a fake so it's a little so bit. it's a six million dollar deal is what you're telling us uh, 12 we'll say 12 this is you, you, get, you get it for deal. two years it's at the, least and sure. then if things aren't looking good you move on in year three yeah I mean, <laughs> from the Steelers' standpoint, that that's more than enough. They're thinking though, right? For them, yeah. For him, do you think he would do that? That's the whole debate. Who's giving him more? That's the but, other question. But that's the debate, though. That's the whole running back issue right it's now. Tough. That's their. I feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, because if he's any other position, we're not even debating. We're like, "Rub, you did this three times a wide receiver. You're Deontay. You're getting it. You're getting the bag." But because you play running back, you're like, "Bro, you don't pay that position that unless it's this and only this." So that's where he's kind of stuck at. No. Yeah. And you kind of want to see what he does in this Arthur Smith system, too. Mm-hmm. I'm intrigued by that. Yeah. Because, like I said, no, he's a good player. That's in, no different. When we've ta- And we've talked about this a lot of times, like when we're just saying with players. Our value convo is different from their ability convo. Like, with, when we talk now, he's ability. That's one totally different thing than... If he's worth this number on a contract, 